We have seen taxes go up, carbon tax up, payroll taxes up, alcohol tax up, capital gains tax up, a new digital services tax, a streaming tax, and the federal government is still running a $40 billion deficit. So you know that these politicians in Ottawa are still looking through the couch cushions trying to find new ways to take more money from you. This is the Taxpayers Federation podcast, where we are fighting for lower taxes, less waste, and more accountable government. I'm Chris Sims. I'm the Alberta Director here for the CTF. My two very good friends are out in Mordor, also known as our embassy there in Ottawa, Canada's capital. Franco Terrazano is our Federal Director. Hey, Franco. Hey. And Ryan Thorpe is our investigative journalist. Ryan is such an asset to the CTF. I can't say this enough. Folks, if you are a news junkie, if you miss the way journalism used to be, read Ryan Thorpe's stuff. You won't be disappointed. Now, you guys are in Ottawa, and I've noticed that the population there has been booming <laughs> and not in a good way. Uh, who wants to take this one away, boys, on how much the bureaucracy has been ballooning? Because straight up, I just got back from seeing my folks out in British Columbia. I literally overheard people talking about too many bureaucrats in Ottawa at the gas station. Ah. They were talking about this story. So who wants to take this one away? So last year alone, the government hired 10,525 new bureaucrats. So this brings the, the size of the federal bureaucracy up to 367,000. And that means that since Trudeau was first elected, he has hired 108,000 new federal bureaucrats. And that's a 42% increase uh, since Trudeau came to power. Um, and so to put things in perspective a little bit, uh, since 2015, Canada's population grew by just 14%. Meanwhile, the size of the federal bureaucracy grew by 42 So if Trudeau had only kept the growth in the bureaucracy in line with population growth, there'd be 72,491 fewer federal bureaucrats today. So taxpayers would be paying for 72,000 fewer government workers. Um, but I have, another thing that's important to keep in mind here is it's not just the size of the bureaucracy that's growing, the cost is as well. Uh, so the federal payroll hit $67 billion last year, which is a record high. Um, in the past four years alone, the Trudeau government has rubber stamped more than a million pay raises. Since 2015, they've handed out more than 1.5 billion, with a B, in bonuses. Um, and another thing that's somewhat crazy is that spending on consultants is also up. Last year alone, we spent $21 billion on outside consultants. So we've got more than 100,000 new federal bureaucrats. We've got more than a million pay raises, more than $1.5 billion in bonuses. We've got 25 or sorry, $21 billion in spending on this army of outside consultants that they're bringing in. And what do taxpayers get for all this? Well, thankfully, the parliamentary budget officer looked into this and they found that federal departments can't even meet half of their own performance targets within each year. And those are performance targets that they're setting for themselves. They aren't targets being set by taxpayers. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty bad news here in Ottawa when it comes to the size uh, of government, how much it's growing and just how much it's eating uh, out of taxpayers' paychecks. That is just brutal. Um, uh, Franco, I know you want to jump in here, but I just wanted to highlight some of this because I'm kind of seeing red right now. So we just got to finish a really uh, quick debt clock tour here in Alberta. We had tons of people coming out to pubs, um, all of them hardworking people. They are done. They are strapped. They're completely tapped out. They're deeply in debt. They are being abused by this federal government. And hearing these numbers infuriates me. So just to be real clear, tr the Trudeau government has added bodies to the federal bureaucracy to the tune of over 100,000 people. Got that right? A hundred. So the Trudeau government has added 108,000 federal bureaucrats in less than a decade. Guys, that is the population of Red Deer. OK, the entire city. Picture that. And did I hear that right, Ryan and Franco? More than 20 billion on outside consultants. OK, That's right. 20 okay. billion. Plus. So, Franco, you guys live down there. Um, how do they add so many people to the bureaucracy and still spend more than 20 billion 
on outside consultants. Folks, these are not employees of the government. These are outside people they're contracting to. How does that even happen? Well, I mean, that's like the real issue with the consulting spending, right? Yeah. Like you, you probably heard like so many headlines where, um, especially the opposition parties and the right to go after it, uh, raising the red flag that the government is spending so much money on consultants. But it's not just the $21 billion a year that's a problem spending on consultants per se. Like, yes, it's a lot of money, but the real problem for taxpayers is that uh, spending on consultants is going through the roof, all while spending on the in-house bureaucracy is going through the roof, right? That is the real problem here. And like, we're now at the point in Ottawa where people are like, okay, hold on a second. The Trudeau government has hired 108,000 new bureaucrats, a 42% increase in less than a decade. Um, are you getting 42% better services from the federal government? Like maybe 42% <laughs> longer wait times, you know what I mean? Like, like, unless you are a federal bureaucrat taking the taxpayer's money, you're not getting 42% better services from the feds, not even close. And I'm over here just being like, how do you even increase the federal bureaucracy by 42% in less than a decade? Like, did Trudeau uh, think there was a bureaucrat shortage in Ottawa before becoming <laughs> prime minister? Like, I don't remember seeing any headlines like that. I mean, here's the thing too, right? Like, and here's why all this really matters, okay? So the federal bureaucracy consumes more than half of the federal government's day-to-day -day spending consumes more than half of the day-to-day -day spending. We have seen taxes go up, carbon tax up, payroll taxes up, alcohol tax up, capital gains tax up, a new digital services tax, a streaming tax, and the federal government is still running a $40 billion deficit. So you know that these politicians in Ottawa are still looking through the couch cushions trying to find new ways to take more money from you. So if the government doesn't get this spending in order, the debt will continue to balloon, the government will continue to run taxes, and the only way for the federal government to truly get its spending in order is to shrink the bureaucracy, is to cut the number of federal government bureaucrats, it is is to cut how much they're paying bureaucrats in terms of the salary, uh, the perks, and the other benefits like bonuses. Can that happen? Can like let's let's be realistic here. Um, yeah. Can you know? Can a government just because I, I hear you on the bonuses, I hear you on the pay, but just the sheer number of butts in seats here yeah. is too many people. Pardon mm -hmm. my language. Like, are they going? Are they able to just say, you know what? Uh, we've way over expanded ourselves. We are shrinking the size of the federal government. Got to go. Sorry, go find another job. Yeah, of course they can. Of course okay. they can. I mean, it's politicians that have the control over the public purse. And let me just give you some some examples, right? So uh, the Harper government, the last handful of years of the Harper government between 2010 and 2015, they reduced the federal bureaucracy by 25,000. Okay, now Trudeau comes in in less than a decade, increases the number of bureaucrats by 108,000. And, you know, Ryan said, like, had the government bureaucracy just grown in line with population growth, we would have 72,000 less federal government bureaucrats. Well, hold on a second, folks, because if you look at the average compensation for a federal bureaucrat, when you talk about pay, salary, perks, benefits, pension, is $125,000 a year. Okay, so what is the cost of those 72,000 excess bureaucrats? It's math. like $9 billion a year. It's $9 billion a year. Now, what does $9 billion a year mean for taxpayers? Well, that's the same amount of money as cutting the first two income tax rates by a percentage point. So here's the thing. You are paying higher taxes because Trudeau's bureaucrat hiring spree is out of control. So we've seen the federal government cut the number of bureaucrats before. We can certainly can and should see it happen again. But not only that, we should be seeing pay cuts. OK, so uh, I mean, Chris, you're in Alberta, the Klein government back in the early 90s yep. when they had to cut uh, cut this massive uh, deficit in Alberta. Klein went up to the union bosses and said, hey, look, folks, I'm about to go do a media press conference. And so you have two options. You can either cut your staff by five percent or you can all take a five percent pay cut. And they agreed on a five percent pay cut. OK, so that can happen here in Ottawa. What about the bonuses, the more than a billion dollars in bonuses to these departments that can't even meet half of their own performance targets? Those taxpayer funded bonuses, 
they should be gone tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was on the Hill uh, in those years, mostly with media and the kicking and screaming for the tiny percentages of the reductions that they required. Most of them were through attrition or early retirement even, but you'd have thought that it was Reagan and the air traffic controllers every single day all over again. Um, I wish, <laughs> but it, well, that was not what was happening. So this is entirely possible. Uh, Ryan, what's, if I can ask you, you guys live in Ottawa, what, what's the mood on the street? Is this being completely ignored? The fact that, you know, the population of Ottawa, Gatineau, the ranks of bureaucrats are swelling? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a government town here, right? Yeah. I mean, we have tons of people uh, in the city of Ottawa who are employed through the federal government. So I don't think this is necessarily the place to get uh, <laughs> the pulse in terms of how Canadians are feeling about the, um, the real explosion of the federal bureaucracy under under the Trudeau government, it's a bit of a bubble here yeah. in Ottawa, the Ottawa bubble. Um, yeah. And so I think it is kind of like the places you were talking about, the gas stations out when you're on your, we're on that trip and, um, you know, communities scattered across the country who are really feeling the pinch as a result of the fact that the, the federal bureaucracy has grown so significantly uh, in the past nine years. These numbers well, are disgusting. Go ahead, Rick. Go ahead, Franco. Well, you, you know, Ottawa certainly isn't a good uh, good criteria of <laughs> measurement for how, like, average Canadians are actually feeling. You know, the ones who are actually paying the bills around here. But you know what we do have? Good time to segue. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, uh, we commissioned Leger, a national polling firm, to ask all Canadians, not just CTF supporters, but, you know, a broad, uh, broad range of Canadians, um, what they think about the federal bureaucracy, okay? So we got Leger to do this poll, and, and look what we got back, okay? So... A by a wide margin, a plurality of Canadians said shrink the bureaucracy. 47% of Canadians said shrink the bureaucracy. Only 29% of Canadians said maintain the current number of bureaucrats. And even less than that, only 7%. Uh, said increase the number of bureaucrats. The rest were unsure. So when we gave Canadians uh, this range of options on what they think should happen to the federal bureaucracy, um, a clear, a clear, clear, clear plurality, 47 percent versus 29 to 7, said shrink the number of federal bureaucrats. So, Chris, you ask and you bring up the, the you know, the concern is that there's going to be a lot of media pressure on any politician oh, yeah. that wants to cut the bureaucracy. Well, that politician just needs to know that they've got Canadians on their side. And in fact, when Klein went after the unions and cut government spending to balance the budget, what happened to Klein's popularity? Right. Yep. It went yep. up despite all the protests, despite all the union bosses ah, ah, shrieking, <laughs> lighting their hair on fire. I mean, he kept on getting elected. And, and I think that we see a similar nature or a similar part of the political cycle now as what happened, geez, 30 years ago in Alberta. Um, is that people are just sick and tired of paying too much tax so they have all these government bureaucrats on the dole. People are sick and tired of it. And any politician that wants to do the right thing and actually shrink the bureaucracy, they need to know, as this poll shows, that Canadians are on their side and want the size of Ottawa to be shrunk. I remember when Ralph Klein did that, so it couldn't have possibly been 30 years ago. That's impossible. Um, so I'm, I'm finding a little bit of hope here. Number one, uh, that's a good number of people who want the bureaucracy to shrink or shrunk. I don't know what the past participle of shrink is. Um, two, though, I think we could get that number up higher. I think if we really start educating people and pointing out that, hey, guys, you know, when you're trying to balance your own household budget, good luck, and you see your income. Yeah, that's your money. Then you see your expenses. This is part of your expenses. Like your money going out the door here is being sucked up by bureaucrats in Ottawa. You're paying for this tab. If that really sinks in for people, I think we'll be able to get that number even higher. And our earlier poll, guys, was really encouraging. I don't remember the last time I've seen, I think it was more than 50% of Canadians want the government to cut spending. Cut spending. That is huge because usually, unfortunately, people just want something. They just magically want the government to be able to pay for stuff and to be able to move that needle closer to 50 percent or even over 50 percent of, hey, guys, stop the party, turn the turn the tap off the keg. We need to stop spending so much, I think, is a big improvement. I think we're going in the right direction with public opinion and politicians. It's like kryptonite for them. 
If the polls start telling them something and the public starts yelling at them, they will cringe back and they will change their behavior. Ryan, were you surprised at the results of the poll on uh, bureaucrats? No, but it's, I think I think Franco uh, hit the nail on the head when um, he said, look, the bureaucracy has grown by 42 percent. Who in Canada thinks they're getting 42 percent better service? And I think that tells the story right there. When you just see the size of the growth of the bureaucracy and you think, well, what has changed for me in terms of my day to day, my interactions with the federal government as a taxpayer? And it's clear that we're not getting a good return on investment. So it doesn't surprise me that lots of Canadians want to see the bureaucracy cut. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that number to continue to tick upwards. Excellent. And, well, let's just you keep know, pushing. Go, let me just, go, Franco. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Let me just throw in here. When you remove the undecideds on this poll, uh, 56% of those who are decided on the issue say cut the number of bureaucrats. So more than more than half. But, you know, what else we got Leger to do on this poll is we got them to break down uh, the numbers by political party vote intentions, by how people say they're going to vote. And when you look at those results, uh, 71% of conservative voters say cut the bureaucracy. 71% of conservative voters say cut the bureaucracy. So, I mean, all the polls show that the conservatives are poised to form the next government and their supporters and voters say cut the bureaucracy. OK, so that's another uh, big thing to take account of here. And, and you know what? We have seen Mr. Polyev quite rightly say that he wants to fix the budget and cut taxes. We've heard him say that. We've heard him say that he would end the bonuses for failing government authorities, including the Bank of Canada and the CBC. Um, and I just want to nail home this uh, nail home this point is that also in recent days and weeks, we've seen uh, Mr. Polyev point out to the fact that the uh, that the bureaucracy has ballooned in mm -hmm. Ottawa. So clearly uh, you have politicians in Ottawa, some of them at least, that are starting to get the message. And I do think another bright side of this uh, this poll is that, well, uh, the, the party that looks poised to form government, their voters say shrink the bureaucracy. Yes. And so a little bit of homework, if I can give a little bit of homework here, um, make sure, folks, that if these folks are your members of parliament, these people you're thinking of, particularly in the Conservative Party, because like you guys just said, they're likely to form the next government if things stay the same. But we know that they don't. Um, so we'll see. Get them on record. OK, uh, if you're their constituent, Continue to say, I want lower taxes. I want less waste. I want you to shrink the size of government. I want you to stop spending so much money and make sure you get them on record because it's our job to do that. Did we want to get to our on that note? Do you want to get to our taxpayer pro tip here? Yeah. And and I'll start uh, just because it is totally on this note. OK, and my, and my taxpayer pro tip goes out to uh, Mr. Pierre Polyev himself. And let me just preface this with, again, remember, folks, the federal government has added 108,000 bureaucrats since Trudeau was elected in 2015. The bureaucracy now consumes more than half of the government's day to day spending. Now, kudos to Mr. Pierre Polyev, who said that he wants to fix the budget and he wants to uh, cut taxes. That is great. But for for Mr. Polyev to be successful in delivering on that promise, It'll be directly tied to his ability to shrink the bureaucracy. It, there's no way around it. There mm -hmm. is no fixing the budget and cutting taxes without shrinking the bureaucracy. So the pro tip goes that if you are going to deliver on that promise, which you should, it's a good promise, then you have to cut the number of bureaucrats in Ottawa. But not only that, it's not just the number of bureaucrats, it's also the pay and benefits. Right. We've heard Polyev on record talk about ending some of these bonuses. All those bonuses should be ended. But there's another part of the story here as well. The Trudeau government has handed out more than one million pay raises in the last four years alone. OK, but for politicians to ask the bureaucrats to take a cut, they're going to have to show leadership themselves and take a pay cut. Remember, politicians, every MP have been giving themselves pay raises year after year after year after year. OK, so for them to have the moral authority to go to the bureaucrats and take a pay cut, they themselves are going to have to stop these pay raises that they give themselves. And we know this can be done because the Harper government froze their own MP pay between 2010 and 2013. 
And not only that, we also have records and proof showing that the bureaucrats point to the politicians' pay raises every year as a reason why they should get more taxpayer cash. So the taxpayer pro tip goes out to Mr. Uh, Pierre Polyev, the leader of the official opposition and the Conservative Party. And the two points there is just this. If you want to cut taxes and fix the budget, which you should, then your ability to do so will be based on your ability to shrink the bureaucracy. And not only that, you got to show leadership on your own pay and stop these automatic pay raises. Excellent. Excellent. And rant. And no, no, rant. it's a great, great rant. Um, I will also point out, not so gently, uh, the last four years have been a dumpster fire mm. for a lot of innocent Canadians who have been battered by this government's overspending and their heavy handedness. And yet the politicians keep on getting pay raises. That just adds insult to injury. So absolutely great taxpayer pro tip. Uh, Ryan, what was yours for this week? So mine goes out to the current government uh, and it's on topic and it's pretty simple, which is just stop hiring more bureaucrats. Uh, we're going to get the numbers sometime next year for how many they've added in 2024. My hope is that number is zero. Uh, Canadians don't uh, want any more federal pay paper pushers. Canadians don't need any more federal paper pushers and Canadians can't afford any more federal paper pushers. So turn off the hiring machine. They balloon this thing enough. Stop hiring bureaucrats. It's pretty simple. <laughs> very, very good. Here, here. <laughs> Amen. All right. Mine is uh, more localized here in uh, the province of Alberta. And I need to preface this, <laughs> okay, because I know a lot of our listeners and a lot of Taxpayers Federation supporters are big fans of Alberta Premier Danielle Smith. Okay. Cards on the table. So am I. Okay. I really like her. Okay. I've known her for like 20 years. We've talked forever. We were in radio a lot of the time. I, I'm a, I like what the premier does most of the time. So this is coming as I would say like advice from a friend. Okay. If I can put the term friend loosely here. Okay. You have to cut taxes. Okay. You campaigned on reducing our income tax bracket. The first one from 10% to 8%. That was a huge campaign promise. Tax cuts for all Albertans. In fact, you estimated it would save 1500 bucks per family. It hasn't happened yet. You're halfway through your mandate. You're supposed to do the big, hard stuff first. Like, the rule usually is do the hard stuff in the first 100 days so that you're not caught in the snare leading up to your next election. We haven't seen that yet. OK, two, the fuel tax. We're paying the full freight on the fuel tax here in the province of Alberta. Now, the premier did the right thing when she fully suspended it for a year, to be fair. But we are paying full freight right now. It is 13 cents a liter for gasoline and diesel. I just got back from a road trip to British Columbia. The gas price is barely different between the Kootenays in B.C. and here. That is like unthinkable for most Albertans. So we were promised lower taxes. We have not seen them. To be fair, we saw an excellent move strengthening the Taxpayer Protection Act so that they're keeping spending increases below the rate of inflation plus population growth. The Taxpayers Federation has been pushing for that for a generation. So that is big time. Excellent. But everywhere I'm hearing now at these rodeos and barbecues, at these local ridings and stuff, folks is getting grumpy fast. So make sure when you come back in to, for your fall session, you get out the chute real fast. You have got to cut taxes and keep your promises for cutting taxes here in Alberta. So that is my very direct and well-meant taxpayer pro tip to Premier Daniel Smith and her government. I know some of them listen to this and I know some of them in her inner circle want her to do this. So she has got to get this done. Uh, folks, if you have any uh, questions about the Taxpayers Federation, how we got started, if you'd like an awesome T-shirt like defunding the CBC, if you want to read those disgusting stats again about how many bureaucrats have been hired by the federal government, all that stuff is on our website. Be sure to share this with people who also want to fight for taxpayers.